have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the Kleber on the fun randoms map here. And uh, you guys stick around uh, for the end because it's going to be pretty, pretty darn interesting. And I always say never give up. But before getting like, subscribe, up in the blow, appreciate all the subscribers and supporters of the channel. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys for building a great community, learning something from it, and uh, having a blast at the same time. So let's get to it uh, so let's talk about what the Kleber does one of my favorite destroyers actually and actually i avoided the Kleber for the longest time and feel free to fast forward if you don't want to hear me chit chat i'm just showing you kind of the development of the game and how the the, the match actually unfolds so that you can understand how again the title of the video is game of throws so you can understand how this actually develops see it how you're positioning and also you get to learn how maybe some tactics and maybe observe uh some uh, destroyer tactics and maneuverings and uh techniques that may hopefully help you maybe be a, a better destroyer player how the Colbert works operates better or maybe if you see something i'm doing wrong maybe you can uh, definitely i'm always here to learn i'm not saying i know everything uh for someone that says they know everything they know nothing so um, but again, l just watch it. If you want to skip forward and pass through the the, the middle of the video, that's totally fine. Uh, and you get to observe something at the same time. But uh, just talking about the Kleber, I avoided the Kleber a lot in the beginning stages of the game because I just didn't like the concealment of it. It really threw me off for a loop um, because really the Kleber, man, the, the detection was out to maybe, what, 7.9, 8-ish if you didn't build for it. And it, like I said, look, somebody's in the cap right now, and they potentially could have spotted me by now. But on, the cool thing I have now, since uh, I actually grinded for it and actually got it, is the actual Kleber Legendary uh, upgrade, which allows you to get down to this 6.2 kilometer detection range, which is really, really awesome. And actually, forgive me, uh, I did not realize this is not the video <laughs> or not the build that I I thought I wanted. It is uh, a little bit out the distance. There is 7.8 uh, uh, detection range. So forgive me, I thought this was the uh, legendary upgrade mod, but actually that is an even cooler uh, legendary uh, upgrade that I like because you get it's focused on torpedoes and you can get down to 6.2 kilometers if you've seen my previous videos. But... And uh, man, I, I I totally thought this was the uh, six point two. I have to. I have so many videos of Clubera. Maybe I got lost. I thought this was the upgrade, but it, the upgrade is awesome. Six point two. The downside is your gun reload is really really lacking. I mean, you're looking at about a 10, 10 second average reload rate, and uh, I didn't like that. But in this one, I actually built it for seven point eight detection, which I don't like. That's that's what deterred me a lot. And but I'm starting to understand the feel of how to play a Clubera. It's fast. It's really using its speed to avoid a lot of the threats out there. And it's really difficult to shoot this thing, uh, especially at long range. And with the engine boost literally running for almost four minutes of the, uh, each burst, you're juking uh, shells, you're stopping on a dime, you're doing all these maneuvers. That it really makes Kleber difficult to kill. It's kind of almost like the Kabarov zombie kind of mode, but also that French saturation. Go look that up if you understand it. Basically, the armor saturates so fast that killing this thing, your shells when you hit a Kleber, it doesn't do as much damage as per se an average destroyer or something else out there. So pretty much you got the best of both worlds here. Speed and the uh, damage is not doing as much damage to you. <clears throat> so why why didn't I like it again, like I said before? Because I'd be spotted right now from 7.8 out, uh, or even 8 if you didn't build for concealment. Uh, any like Shin Mikaze player has got a 5.6 or a, a gearing of 5.6 or 5.8 detection. is so They're detecting you from so far away that it kind of lights you up. You're, in, you're basically observed from a million miles away, and you really can't do any kind of sneaky maneuvers that a shorter player would like to do. But, like I said, the speed and the, the armor layout of this uh, destroyer really allows you to mitigate a lot of that. And here's why I like this kind of build. The reason why I sacrifice concealment is because the gun reload. Because for maximum gun reload build, I'm, I mean, I'm shooting right now. I'm getting a, what is it? With the engine boost, or, I'm sorry, reload booster on, about two seconds reload. And then once it goes away, you're seeing I'm about getting a five and a half. So a little bit better reload. And the guns are fairly decent. They're they're hard hitting, very, uh, what, 130 something millimeter caliber. So you're getting a good uh, uh, chunk of damage, good penetration. AP really, uh, APs on the Clavier really do some citadel damage on some of these cruisers if you catch them in the open and the broadside very very surprising what a club uh ap rounds can do to light cruisers and maybe some un closer in uh heavy cruisers so very very powerful that's why i liked it a lot and i'm starting to play around with this high detection for gun reload and low detection for torpedo builds because 
two different types of play styles because one is super sneaky 6.2 you're running in there fast and you're catching a lot of these destroyer players off guard we're going oh my gosh that's a club at 6.2 kilometers and then boop you've popped the reload booster and you're killing them right off the bat the other one is the torpedo aspect reload where uh you're you're r rushing in there you're you're catching a lot of these uh I would say destroyers and sometimes even these big ships that are just, I mean, it's hard to kill a Colbert up close, especially when you got 30 second reloads on battleships and cruisers. So very, very scary and difficult. But the, then the gun reload comes into play. If you do, don't want to do, I mean, you still have the, the, the uh, torpedo reload ability. If you don't want to play for the legendary upgrade, you can still use the guns and then still rush in on an unsuspecting target, which again, catches a lot of players off guard very very scary so yeah that's why i started learning trying to play the both styles of gameplay with one's focused on gun reload the other one is uh torpedo load. so i'm starting to play a little more i like a club a lot now especially like the marceau that man the french uh, destroyer line is pretty pretty horrendous and uh devastating so right now you can see like we abandoned uh charlie cat because look nobody's over there supporting us so it's nothing wrong with you going hey let's disengage and reassess and re uh, evaluate where can we be most effective and the club air i like like the marceau is a quick reaction force you're allowed to run away and go back to the area where you are most needed that's why i like the destroyer role because you are able to impact the game so so much uh, for not only in the early game phases of the game, but even in the middle and then the ending phases of the game because you're rushing around and reacting to how the battlefield is. It's not taking as much time. Notice that we're engaging this jet line right here because look at these guns. Even at about eight and a half a, a kilometer distance, we're still shooting and we're getting some of these nice penetration hits right about there. I mean, it does a lot, a lot of damage, these guns, and they're very scary, especially with the reload booster active. I mean, you're just getting a lot of shells down range and literally just pum pummeling an uh, uh, unsuspecting destroyer that doesn't have much heals or doesn't have much armor. And it is very, very powerful and devastating. I like the Club Bear for this reason. They have a very, very powerful gun reload. And do we get this? Yep, we get him down. Lucian takes him out and finishes him off right there. One destroyer down. Now, look at how the game is developing here. We don't have any caps, and we're trying to cap this one, but unfortunately, we're getting shot at. We're getting reset. We just have to get out of dodge. We cannot afford to use, again, we don't have any heals, so that's another downside of the Club Air. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, play our armor and and conserve a lot of our health sparingly and also conservatively, and oh, I hit an island there, bad on me for not paying attention. I was more paying attention on either some kind of torp or uh, just getting shot at here. I'm juking now here. Engine boost is on. I got torpedoes heading my way. I've got to get out of this little cove. And that's what I like about the engine boost being lasting so, so long. And also AA is trash. So we got to get out of here because AA is constantly spotting us or spotter planes or fighter planes. And hopefully the new rework will solve all this problem right here. But you can't be really sneaky around with a carrier involved or spotter planes involved. So we're really just trying to run away and kind of, again, disengage, reassess, figure out where we need it here, get out of here. And uh, look at that. We have Alpha being overrun by battleships and cruisers. We have Bravo being overrun by a battleship. We have Charlie being overrun because nobody's over there. And look where everybody's at. Now, most people would say conventional wisdom says, oh, man, we're done in the game. No, I actually say continue playing to see where it develops because I've noticed the majority of games when people they, or the enemy that have overrun the caps start to push. And everybody else, look at that. We only have to manage a quarter of the screen here, or the quarter of the mini-map. You notice that. And a lot of us are bulked together, so we're now focused uh, firing now. So that's another thing that the enemy has to understand, is if you overrun caps, you don't need to win hard. You don't need to keep pushing. And I've noticed a majority of the games are lost by people literally pushing single-file line after you got the caps and people just start doing their own thing. And now when you're pushing into an enemy force in their spawn, the enemy is now, or us, we are sitting together, clumped together, and now we have four times the amount of guns as opposed to the lead point man uh, because <laughs> now we're focused firing at this point. As you can see right here, the Prince Rupert, I'm calling for, hey, everybody shoot this Prince Rupert in the middle here. He's rushing like a, you know, uh, a solo player here. And now we're just using our guns to start a fire and get something going. And then, of course, we've got uh, in the Alpha Cap, you notice we have three ships that are focusing on a single fog conga line of people. And I've noticed that is the the beginning of the end of most players because they're kind of just, you know, I don't understand it. They're getting in line to die. So uh, really, like you say, on the eastern side, we got the 
The the destroyer is out front. The, they're being is chasing a lot of these cruiser players. Aleutian's also hunting as well. So having an, another key component of watching these games turn around is ha keeping your destroyer players alive because they are the ones that are spotting out front for you. They're kind of a screen for other enemy destroyers that don't want to just get, give them free reign to torp and you know smoke up or gunboat. Uh, never ever let a destroyer player run amok on your flanks because now it's just the end of the world at that point. Because now your battleships and cruisers have nobody spotting, nobody torp screening, nobody going to head of the, the group and then just keeping that barrier in front and also distracting players and they'll notice right there we just they just lost to ragnar the enemy lost to ragnar in the thunder right off the bat at charlie cap uh, area this is where the beginning of the ends happens within the next four or five minutes and another player goes down vermont goes down from the gremlin here and if you want to actually go back and slow roll this video and go back and forth back and forth and review look how many of the enemy players start dying in just in a matter of 30 seconds and i'm telling you like now never ever give up in this game because you can never you can always see players just doing really crazy stupid stuff just starting to give up on their ship or they're just starting to become wildly aggressive and that is when it starts to beginning to deteriorate because you lose your destroyers now the enemy team has lost all their destroyers like what did i say you lose your destroyers, they're going down annapolis goes down right there and then they lose the main which is one of their heavy hitting uh super battleships coming out right now so they're losing a lot of their heavy hitters and just like that in the last minute and a half they just lost half their team right there all due because of their lead solo rushing and just kind of just well, i don't know what they're doing throwing away ships and literally throwing the match right here and they're not reacting to any of it. And you got their battleships starting to rush now. They're like saying, don't worry, we got this. The game's in the bag. We've got all the caps. But no, 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 no. Boom, like that. You just lost another battleship taking a unsuspecting torpedo, rushing into a spawn. And I'm not really sure what the enemy's doing right here. Alpha Cap is being overrun because now our team is pushing one-on-one -on -one solo match, a three-on-one. And then, of course... Three on one. I mean, the battle, the, the battleships at Alpha and the, are just literally focus firing on one ship, while the other uh, of the enemy team is just sitting up behind an island where the guns are not able to be um, focused, fired, or even put to bear. And here we go. Here and the the Alpha Cap had just taken out another a Moskva, and now the 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 tables have turned, where we all of a sudden have more ships to their enemy ships, and then uh, of course we lose one Montana, which is not not so bad. Brindisi takes them out right there, finally. Uh, but unfortunately, they have two ships to one over there. And we have the majority of the destroyers now playing. And pretty much just like that, we can have we have our two destroyers left, and they don't. And, of course, I've just said Game of Thrones right there. And then, uh, yeah, our, our team's like, yep, we turned it around. Vermont gets focused down on again. Again, no matter how powerful Vermont is, when you're focused on for multiple players, especially two destroyers that are focusing it, and boom, a destroyer takes out a battleship, like I've always said. The destroyer is the biggest key component of the game. Enemy team lost their destroyers. We have our destroyers. Now we can go around a little bit faster and quicker to cap, but also spot. And of course, we torp, and and also last resort is gunboating, and that's my bread and butter right there. Game right there. I mean, we it didn't seem like we were doing much. I mean, I was just running around trying to cap. Marseille goes down. Their ships are now down to only two. Of course, with their CV doesn't really count in my mind. A CV is just uh, an airport floating on the water, and uh, we didn't do much. We had ninety nine thousand uh, HP right there. We just were all we were doing was being patient. We're spotting, we're continuing our spotting, we're spent, continue torping, and we're kind of, we're just observing from the battlefield. And the reason I like about the Clavera so much is, look, we're topping out about 55 knots. We're running back to the uh, the caps and really trying to as assure the win victory of this game. And uh, there it is. Brindisi goes down, and the rest of this game is just hunting down the carrier right there. But I'll leave it to you, Garrett. Build will be at the end of the screen. This is, again, forgive me, this is the gunboat build I do enjoy playing once in a while, but then there is also the legendary upgrade for a torpedo focus where the gun reload is like doubled essentially but the gun reload here is about a five and a, a four to five second reload for adrenaline rush and everything kicking in the reload booster is down to two but if you play for torpedoes the club air um, has a reload about 10 seconds for the guns which is not favorable when you hit the reload booster it goes back down to five which is manageable but you're more focused on that torpedo sneak attack running in and killing 
and that's what I enjoy on both aspects. So let me know your thoughts. Do you like playing the torpedo-focused or the gun-focused Kleber? And really, it's just about uh, your particular play style and how you react, but I do enjoy playing this a lot. It is really awesome, And uh, but you can see right there, Game of Throws just coming back from a Thunder, and the enemy team has now suffered that loss. But let me know what you think about the comments below. Like, subscribe, and below. Appreciate all the support on the channel, and as always, hope you have a great one. Say hi when you see me out there, and nothing more satisfying than taken out a CV. Take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.